We've been getting lots of reports or indicators from other big banks on how they're going to start reopening their business. Do you guys have a plan yet for the U.S., and what is it? Well, Alex, thank you so much for having me, by the way, today. Uh, it's, an, an, it's definitely an unprecedented situation, and, uh, um, uh, you know, my first priority in my position as CEO is obviously ensuring the safety of the staff. And, um, um, and, and it's, it's um, uh, obviously, it's important to mention that we have 95% of our staff working from home, and the bank is, uh, you know, open for business, moving full speed, serving clients. Uh, return to the office, obviously, is something we are planning on very, uh, 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 it, it, with a lot of, uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, c consistent, consistency and focus, um, I would say uh, you should expect it to be gradual uh, and through phases. Mm -hmm. Probably first we're going to get our critical staff back on premises and, uh, and, and we'll reassess how the uh, pandemic, you know, uh, evolves. Uh, you, we, we will do it, obviously, following state guidelines and group policy, but we're engaging with employees and uh, their feedback is important to us, obviously, and I, I see three concerns, you know, coming from them. The first one is around commuting. The second one is really around uh, testing. There is going to be different kind of testing. And the third one is obviously around social distancing once back on premises. So, Jean-Yves, some of the other banks have been looking at things like setting up a temporary office in the suburbs, for example, or only bringing back capacity to 20 to 25 percent. Do you have any specifics that you can kind of give us into what you're looking at? Well, you know, uh, any, uh, obviously, each, uh, each business model will have their own, you know, criteria in terms of timing. Uh, uh, as it relates to, to BNP Paribas, I don't expect uh, through this phase one more than, you know, 15 percent back on, uh, on premises. You know, there is no absolute rush nor urgency to get back on premises because, you know, the bank is really functioning very effectively. Had you told me, Alex, like two and a half months ago that we would be operating successfully with 95 percent of the staff working from home, I think I would have been uh, hard pressed to, to believe you. No kidding. I would have been hard pressed to tell you that I'd be broadcasting from my home. Uh, so I'm with you on that. Um, I wonder how that comes out on the other end in that structurally, are you looking at a, a smaller um, uh, uh, rental space, a smaller office space footprint, less people permanently in the office? Facebook had bombshell yesterday saying that uh, that would be their way forward. Well, I think you are highlighting another very important point, which is what kind of structural changes we might be uh, experiencing here. Definitely, I think working from home is going to be a trend to, uh, to stay, to last, and there is going to be collateral consequences. The one you just mentioned, I do believe that you know, uh, companies will review their real estate footprint in the very dense urban areas. I do believe as well that we are going to be reviewing uh, business travel, you know, as now we are getting so used to do it uh, digitally. Uh, I see all the structural changes, by the way, Alex, coming from my clients this time. It's uh, a, a real re-domestication of supply chains uh, mm -hmm. uh, for economic, That's for, I would say, independence, and as well, uh, 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 it would be a way at the time the uh, unemployment rate is uh, uh, increasingly ex increasing exponentially to probably contribute to job creation. Uh, it's, it's good insight to get from all your clients. So to follow on that, I'm interested. I know you're ahead of the USA, but you're going to have insight into the rest of the world as well. Do you get a read from your clients as to which region is poised to recover the fastest? Well, I, you know, being a global bank, we obviously have a view on Asia, on Europe, on US. But more specifically in my role, I'm obviously bridging Eurozone and, uh, and, 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 and US here. Well, I, I see... Probably across, a, a, a it's probably going to be a softer, slower recovery than what we would have probably hoped for initially. Uh, our economies see uh, a contraction of the economy for 2020 in the U.S. around 6 percent, Eurozone around 8 percent. We have similarities, Alex, here on, on, on both continents. It's really uh, beyond the impact. I've seen central banks doing a wonderful job in terms of uh, adjusting monetary policy and providing liquidity. 
Uh, we've seen, you know, st uh, governmental programs, including at the EU level, to really support the economy. There is one difference I would like to highlight, though, European versus U.S. In Europe, you have, uh, you know, universal health care and I would say unemployment protection that probably has provided early on more stability and might actually ease a, a, a faster recovery. Obviously, everything being equal, you know, resurgence of this pandemic, second wave, this is something obviously that has to be watched very carefully. Whereas here in the U.S., it feels like the relief is coming through banks like yourself. Can you talk me through, uh, with the payroll protection program or anything along those lines, uh, how easy is it or how difficult is it for you to distribute funds? Sure, sure. And, you know, when I'm mentioning the central banks and the Fed, you know, with Treasury, good coordination, they've done a wonderful job in terms of supporting this economy. The banking system has done the very same thing here. Uh, and at BNP Paribas, in the United States, you know, we have 14,000 employees. We have a retail activity. We have a wholesale activity. And through Bank of the West, uh, we've been providing liquidity uh, uh, deferrals, and we've been participating to some of these programs. And uh, uh, the, the, the PPP that you just mentioned, uh, we've received, I think numbers speak, you know, we've received 18 and processed 18,000 applications, which will convert into over 3 billion of guaranteed lending. Uh, we've protected uh, with this probably around 300,000 jobs. But on the larger corporate side, we've provided obviously a lot of liquidity, leveraging the balance sheet, but you know, access to capital markets, in our case, in euros, in dollars. And we've been very active advising companies on hedging strategies across rates, commodities, equities, uh, given the you know, increased volatility. Uh, one other thing that uh, BNP has really been at the forefront with sort of b being a French bank has been a push into ESG, uh, whether it's on a capital market side or on a company side. And I'm really curious as to if you see that trend shifting or being disrupted because of the virus. Well, that's an excellent point as well, Alex. So actually, we've seen this trend being reinforced, you know. Obviously, the appetite for ESG products was very high in 20, 2019. But what I've observed over the last few months is actually a striking shift from environmental into uh, social. Uh, really, this pandemic has highlighted the threat to health, to our communities, to our economies. Uh, just uh, uh, some metrics here. Last year, you know, social bonds within uh, sustainable bond uh, issuance were like 5% in 20, 2019. Year to date in 2020, it's already 30%, and BNP Paribas has underwritten 30 billion of the 80 billion of social response bond issued so far. It's interesting to mention as well that, you know, the issuers of social uh, response bonds are very diversified. You know, you have insurance companies, banks, and corporates. I think it really highlights that the business world here, investors, issuers, are very focused on trying to provide solutions to, uh, to the uh, uh, environmental and social dimension uh, 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 today and onwards. Uh, what's the demand like for those social bonds uh, and uh, versus, say, what they might have been six months ago? Uh, well, as I mentioned, you know, it's, uh, last year it was 5% of the total market of for sustainable bond issuance, and in 2020 it's uh, around 30. Then it's a massive, massive shift into social. I want to be clear, I believe the environmental part of it will continue to be very active, as I think the whole world realizes how critical it is to, uh, you know, protect and uh, protect the planet uh, in, a, in, a, in a sustainable way. Uh, so going forward, if you walk your business out 18 months, so we get some kind of vaccine or really solid treatment, what's going to be the biggest change uh, in the e economic, trading, banking landscape that you're anticipating? Well, I see, uh, as you rightly mentioned, you know, sustainable finance to be even more uh, central to, um, uh, to, 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 to the capital market world. Uh, I, I, I do see that, you know, we might have entered into a new paradigm in terms of digitization and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the life and the working from home uh, will have benefits, I believe, by the way. We, you know, uh, employees will probably benefit from a better, you know, work-life balance for, you know, less commuting, definitely less traveling. 
Um, and as I mentioned, I think some of the key criteria of a global world will be reassessed, and uh, I, I believe supply chain will, will, will probably be the first one to be, uh, to be changing and evolving.